So I don't know how somebody will be a Christian and he does not pray. Then he's not working. You're, you're going to be a Christian, you never fast. You're going to be a Christian, you never study the word of God, you see. You never press into the things of God by yourself. Then, then you're not doing excellence. God has lukewarmness. He's so excellent. He, if you're going to be a sinner, be an excellent sinner. If you're going to be righteous, be an excellent right. But don't, don't, don't be in the middle. A lot of people in church are in the middle. You come for Sunday, Sunday service. You never come for midweek service. I mean, I'm wondering in my mind, if you're a Christian, so where do you go throughout the week? Because the unbeliever, I know where the unbeliever goes throughout the week. He goes to the bar. He goes to drink. I mean, there is no real unbeliever in his right senses that misses Friday night drinking. It's not a serious unbeliever. There is no serious unbeliever girl, you know. I'm going to address that in a bit. It's part of my message today. Order. All right? I'm, but let me not jump myself. There's no serious unbeliever girl that misses night Friday night clubbing. I, 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 I told you some weeks ago that there's a, I, I leave home like 6 a.m. to get here. There's a club right on the way to my, my coming here. By 6 a.m., those people are not ready to go. 6 a.m., Sunday morning, they are still hanging around from club. They're not ready to go. That is what we are talking about. Dedication. <laughs> Most Christians, if you do 9 VG, by, by 3 a.m., they can't even wait for it to close to go home. But unbeliever, 6 a.m. People that resume 10 in the night, oh, and they've been dancing and drinking, oh, and 6 a.m. they are not ready to go home. How can an unbeliever not be better than you? They are doing their own to go to hell. You are doing your own to go to heaven, and they are still better than you. God said, I hate lukewarmness. So you are going to make up your mind today. If you are going to be an unbeliever, do it well. If you are going to be a believer, see Apostle Paul. When he was an unbeliever, he didn't just stop at being an unbeliever. He was killing believers. Say, what? You're a believer? He organized the stoning of Stephen. He said, he's the one that held their clothes and said, stone him. When he became saved, he said, if I was ready to die for Satan, he said, I'm ready to die for God. Same dedication. And he wrote three quarters of the New Testament. But when you see some people, they are lazy unbeliever. But then they become Christian, they also be lazy Christian. Come to midweek service. Midweek service. <laughs> I don't see at night. No, me, I'll be bats. I'll see for night. I'm cats. I'm bats. I'm seeing at night. All of us don't see for night. We just manage the light we have and move slowly. He said, I'm rushing home. To do what? To do what? To eat a and watch news or watch TV. Are you here, somebody? Make up your mind. That anything you are going to do, make up your mind. Anything you are going to do. I met one of my unbeliever friends. Um, we went to secondary school together. We were bad boys in secondary school together. He met me recently, like two years or so ago. And he, he said that he has been hearing about me, that I'm a great pastor now. And he said that he knew from when he heard I was born again, he knew I was going to go far with it. Because he knew that anything I did, I went to the top of it. I did it well. Anything I did, I did it well. So he said he knew. He's not surprised. Because when he heard I was born again over many 20 years ago, he knew that I would go, I would go far. Because he knew that this guy doesn't do anything small time. Make up your mind. Develop a culture of excellence in your own life. That anything you are going to put your hand to do, dive into it. Dive into it. Di I, I'm just like that by nature. When I started riding motorbikes, uh -uh, there's nowhere in the world I travel to that I won't go to a bar bike shop. I won't go and ask questions. I won't go and sit down with them. I, ride, I rent bikes abroad to ride bikes. I'm committed to bike riding. I ride around Lagos. I ride around. I ride. When I moved on, I became a football fan. It wasn't up to 10 years or 5 years ago that I said I like football. I'm a Man City fan. I've been to the stadium at least 3 or 4 times till now. You can't say you're a fan. You're watching from here. <laughs> I see, I'm dedicated. If you hear I'm doing something, just know I'm entering inside. Complete fan. Have a citizen. Have a fan number. Registered fan of Man City. Watch, I have Jesse's everything. Complete. It's a culture. It's a culture. It's not about football. It's about the culture. It's not about motorbike. It's about the I, now I ride bicycles for exercise. Ask people that know me now. I, I, I have bicycles that are carbon fiber. I don't know. I don't go into details. If you know any bicycle that is carbon fiber, I have a Ferrari bicycle. It's carbon fiber. I don't want to say more than that. It will annoy somebody. I have, I have a machine that I put on the bike as I'm riding. It's telling me the kilometers, the calories. I, I, when I enter anything, why? Surface is never good. What are you doing on the surface? Nothing's happening on the surface. The real deal. 
It's always inside. No, nope. you won't benefit from anything if you stay on the surface. You so you can't say you are you are into a certain business and you're on the surface. You are into clothing and you don't know where, where we can get real fabrics. You can't you don't you, you, you don't know anything. You are just on the surface. You are into food and you are, you are in the surface. You 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 don't know you don't know you can't go deep down. All treasures are gold is not found. Stone is found on the top. Gold is never found on the top. Everything that is precious, oil, gold, oh, they are found where deep. You have to make effort to see them. The ones that are cheap, cement, and other things are on the surface. Somebody getting this? So you develop a culture. Huh? I became born again. I heard that it's possible for God to lead you. As in God can talk to me. What am I waiting for? I started to study. I started to pray. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I heard that God can prosper you. Huh? There's prosperity in God. We're doing covenant of blessing last, next week. Prosperity is not my idea. I'm not the one that somebody, <laughs> somebody saw my car and he was angry and was writing on my page, writing rubbish. And she said, eh, do we tithe to, because we want to get blessed? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not, I, it's not my idea. Don't look at me bad. Is, you see, the, what I'm going to teach next week, covenant of blessing, I'm trying to show you the covenant God brought to us. I'm not the one that went to meet God. It's God that came to meet me and said, see my covenant with you. That in blessing, I will bless. I'm not the one that suggested it. It's not my opinion. Are you here, somebody? So you can't hate me for being blessed. You never see anything. If not this card, they annoy you. Wait. It's not my idea. He said, when you tithe, he said, I will open you. I'm not the one. He said, I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There will not be room to receive it. Yeah. When I got my first $100,000 in cash and I called my bank officer, I want to pay it in. He said, you can't pay it in at once or else alarm will go everywhere. That divided and pay it in. It reminded me of the scripture that said, there will not be room enough to receive it. The kind of blessing coming when you follow God, you can't pay it in once. It's what the Bible says. One of our guys here, he made some money in euros when they, when they paid him the first deposit, not the whole money, they paid him a first deposit of the money. EFC locked his account. He came, boom. This one will be a lot, an alarm. Boom. <laughs> EFC locked everywhere. So, what's going on? <laughs> he now called them and explained everything. They released the money. It was heavy. That's the kind of payment you'll be getting. Are you getting this, guys? So it's not by, I'm not, I'm not the one that said about talking about it. He brought covenant to me. I'm going to do that from next week, all right? But the baseline is that anything you're going to do, do it well. I heard, I, when, <laughs> when I was a young Christian, I heard my own pastor and my mentor say, I prosper in every currency. Ah, I have no problem with that. Because the same God is rich unto all. So I press into God. I press into God. If it's available in God, oh, I'm going to go deep down. And that's the same way I do every single thing I do. I do it well. I hate surface. But some people have a culture of uh, mediocrity. You say you are, in, you are in a certain business. And I, I, I hate when somebody is in a business, I'm the one now teaching him the business. Ah, yeah, 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 you can't work for me, never. You are in a field, you should know everything about that field. You should know the best people. You should know the best practices. You should be so deep in it. You immerse yourself in it. Anything you are involved with, you should not be on the surface. Because, like I teach them in the business school, it is the mugus that fund the gurus. Did you get that? The people on the surface are the ones that always fund the gurus. Because they always make mistakes and be buying equipment they don't need from people that uh, know that they don't need it. Since you're a mugu, you don't want to have sense. Bye. Hallelujah. Get deep into it. Get deep into it. You have a new child, you have a child, get deep into it. What I think you must know about children, what I think you must know about babies, what things you need. Be vast. Anything you touch, you get a new job, be vast about that industry. Be vast. Anything you touch, just be vast. Enter, read, study. Let me, know, let me try and move because uh, I have many points to touch. Next point. Next point. Have a system of appraisal. If you are going to achieve or attain excellence, you must have a system of what? Appraisal. That means have a way that you can check your performance. If you don't have a way to check your performance, then you can never improve. 
there must be a way to check your what? Performance. That's what God did. After God made the, this one, he will come and check that it was good. That means he will do this one, he will come and check. That means there was a way he was doing appraisal. Most of you that work in, corporate, in the corporate world, you know that there, there must be appraisal. That's, the way. That's how we know who to promote. Because some people are here to joke. Some people are here to play. So how are you appraising yourself in that thing you are doing? Create a system to appraise yourself. If you're a business person, you might have to have um, a feedback form for all your clients. Listen, clients are very funny. Human beings are funny. They vote with their leg instead of with their mouth. People complain with their leg instead of their mouth. What do I mean? If you don't treat them right, instead of them to tell you, they will use their leg and go to another customer. You just be calling them, ah, I've not seen you. <laughs> we are coming. When? Next week. That will never arrive. So instead of that, so people don't complain with their mouth, they complain with what? Their leg. Move to another customer. <laughs> so have a feedback form. If somebody is doing business with you and he stops doing business with you, ask him why. In a polite way, in a non-threatening way, don't ask him as if you want to kill him. Say, why? You went to buy from another person? Mm -mm. He won't tell you the truth. Nicely. Ask him that, why are you not buying again? You buy from that, why? why? Find out what that person is doing. Instead of, you know in Nigeria, you build hotel. It's running down. You are not maintaining it. The, 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 the gen, I mean the AC, when you own it, it will first talk before it start blowing. You want to start? Oh. Yeah, you could first come blow hot air for one hour. You know, most hotels, you only use them when they are new. After they are up to five years, they shut down because there's no maintenance culture, no appraisal going on. Then another person build a new one down the road, all the customers do what? Move there. Then the, this one here, instead of him to go and step up his facility, he will go and start praying and go to do jazz or say, My enemies are against me, they are distracting my customers. No devil can stop excellence. America and some of these other countries were all rushing to. They are very ungodly. But yes, we are rushing there. Because nothing can stop excellence. People are entering boats. Entering boats. Crossing ocean. Crossing a hard desert to go to Europe. See excellence. Attracting people. Are you here, somebody? So have a way. Get feedback. Don't, you see, human beings are funny. You have served them. They've made up their mind. They won't come again. If you don't ask them, they won't tell you. They vote with their leg instead of their mouth. They complain with their leg. You serve, some people, you serve them food. They're eating the food in their mind. They're saying, if you see my leg here again, <laughs> cut it. <laughs> you're saying, how is the food? They're saying, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> in their mind, they're saying, how is the food? If you see me here again in your life, somebody gave you a job. You delivered the job. You say, how is it? You say, fine. You let him go. <laughs> because that fine, it carries the message whether he will ever use you again or recommend you. And referral is still the greatest form of advertisement in this world. People are not talking well of your business. Sister, three men have dated you. They all run. Find the most godly among them and ask him the real problem. They will not tell you. They say, it's not you, it's me. You are too good for me in a lie. Ask him or ask a pastor. Ask somebody that can tell you the truth. I hear somebody. I told them a story in the, in the island church. <laughs> How uh, one of my mentors is an American pastor, but a very funny guy. So <laughs> he went to preach somewhere. And he said normally when he goes to preach somewhere, he doesn't eat in member's house. Because if he eats in one member's house, you know, the other person will say, ah, why didn't you come to our own house? So when he goes to preach somewhere, he eats in hotel or restaurant. Doesn't eat in anybody's house. So, but this woman has been inviting him every time he comes. He comes to our house. Come and eat this particular food, this particular food. So after much cajoling, he said, let me just honor her and go. Now, the woman who used, was a church member, a deacon or whatever in the church. The husband didn't used to come to church. So he came to the house to eat. She prepared the food. She served the food. I remember this woman has been making noise about this food. When she served the food... And the guy ate the food. It was not sweet. But he was eating. You have to be polite to your guest, Abby. So you could smile. <laughs> Human beings, you must press them to get the truth. So she now said, 
How is the food? Tell me, tell me. How is the food? And he said, of course. He thought in his mind, I'm going to lie like a dog. I'm going to lie that this food is sweet. Because that's what all of us are going to do. I mean, I'm not the one that will tell my guest, my host, that his food is not sweet. So he was planning to lie like a dog. But he said, the Holy Ghost told him, don't lie. Say the truth. <laughs> he said, that's the problem of hearing God sometimes. He will give you advice you don't want to take. You know, there's some advice you know. You know the real thing, but you don't, that's, not, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> At this point in time, God told him, don't lie. Say the truth. He said, how can I tell these people this? And they were all waiting. You know. There were people on the table. He does man was there, but other people were on the table. He said, how is the food? How is the food? Tell me. He looked at the woman. <laughs> he said, this is trash. He said, this is trash. And the husband banged his spoon on the table. Boom! He said, now I know you're a man of God. <laughs> he said, now I know you're a man of God. man of God. <laughs> the husband said, for many years, different pastors have been coming here and they lie through their teeth. They all eat this food and lie that is sweet. So I've, I've already assumed that all men of God are liars. But now that I saw you say the truth, I said, now I know you're a man of God. And some weeks after that guy started going to church and became born again. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God help you if you go to somebody's house and they ask you, the food. <laughs> you are totally on your own. But you see how that truth got that guy born again because you have seen people lie anyhow. He said, Now I know you're a man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>